All right, we're back with another Deer Society Live. This is kind of a cool early season, um, a clip we're gonna break down here. We're heading into the season, you know, closing in on September. Maybe we can pick out some tips here that'll help you um, head into opener. So right here, it's Minnesota in this clip, um, opening weekend two years ago. So, you know, right in that middle of September and just gonna try to pick out some things here that may help you out in the season. I, and I noticed right away a little bit of green on the beans here still. We're sitting over a soybean field and the, the bucks are starting to roll in. So maybe we'll uh, let Dan go. Anything you see here in, in particular that would help somebody? So obviously the thing, first thing I notice is, you know, there isn't a lot of green left. Um, we talk about it all the time is when these beans start turning yellow within the next few days, that deer's gonna be out of there. He's either gonna be on to the next green field that's got more green because once they turn yellow, they're going to be off to the transition into the next food source. So me personally, if I know season's a few days out, I'm going to have plan B in effect. Um, you know, I may still focus a little bit on hunting over that field the first day or so if it's going to fall in that. But I'm also going to be scoping out other fields. Where's my closest fields around there that have greener beans? If not, with any luck, there won't be. And then on my property, I'm going to have white oaks falling them deer are gonna transition out of them bean fields onto them white oaks, and I'm gonna to hope to be ahead of that game and have my stand set and trail camera set on them white oaks. Yeah, so kind of analyzing the scenario around this, this field, if all the neighbor's beans turned and they're brown and yellow, this one has a little bit of green, maybe pulling more deer in there than they would typically see on the property. I could also see this being a lot of bucks that are not local to this area you know, finding that last green source. So it's kind of a, you know, you got a few days to really capitalize on this and I would hit it hard if, you know, you got just a little bit of green left on the field because like you said, it'll be burnt out in three, four days and, and then it'll be it'll be done. I'd actually almost wonder too, with as yellow as that field is and the little bit of green left with them bucks still being in there, if that isn't the last field that is green, you know. That's kind of where I was gonna go with yeah. it too, so. Yeah, they were hitting this field pretty hard. There were six, seven bucks, this one here. I think he was a four-year-old, um, not the best genetic buck, but pretty cool. I mean, a mainframe eight with five brow tines, so pretty cool buck. Um, any comments on body size, age, or any um, anything you pick up on this video clip out of this, this buck? Definitely appears to be a mature buck. Uh, maybe this one's the, I think this, there was a bigger one in here before him, right? Yeah, there'll be two bucks in the clip. Is this the second one? Yeah. He looks, the first one that you showed definitely appeared to be, to me at least, my guess would be at least four or five year old deer. Um, that one may be just a tad bit younger, but uh, definitely a mature, you know, more mature than immature buck. Um, a good, definitely a good target buck for Minnesota, you know. So Minnesota opens up middle of September as well as Wisconsin. What are the dates in Ohio for opening, opening our bow season? We open up September 26th. So um, kind of the same with you guys as far as it's it's a crapshoot. Rather, you're going to have green beans. Yeah, or you're, you're a little further sick. south, but yet we're a week earlier too yes, that we exactly. open. So it's kind of so your crops evens probably, out. They're going to turn yellow before ours, but with the season difference, yeah, right, absolutely. it's about the same. And then I'm guessing your rut gets comes in effect about a week or two before ours too, right? Usually, about a week. But from uh, southern Iowa, yeah, right around uh, that. We're we're close to, but probably we're peak a out little bit before peak rut around the tenth. Yeah, November. Okay, and we're about the third week. But unfortunately, it's gun season opens up that week, so you don't really see the activity like you would if the gun season. So here's one open. of the other bucks walking in as well. Uh, three-year-old, I think three-year-old type buck. Um, the cool thing is he's still alive this year, two years later. So with our rotations, that's actually another kind of cool topic is this, fe this field turned into corn last year. So this was 2018 beans, 2019 corn, 2020 back to beans. We were scouting actually last night a little bit and we drove by this field, saw a few deer out there. So using this information and trying to see if the beans are still going to be green this year it's, there's an opportunity we can take that and try to hit the opening date and try to get something down mike with, with your experience would you say that um 
the years that the deer, the years that the your, your target bucks have had a lot more soybeans around them than corn, did they show more antler growth? You think? I've never really analyzed it that way, to be totally honest with you. I look at beans a little bit differently um, when I'm thinking beans, and I'm a huge fan of the bean. You know, the boys give me a hard time because they're so tough to to grow in a food plot here. Um, if you don't have a big ag field like this, they'll just crush them. They'll take them out, and there's really not a lot you can do about it. And I liked your tip uh, in the podcast that we had about throwing some sorghum in there, and the beans will survive and they, because the, uh, they're growing together with the sorghum. So I might try something like that or some fencing. But beans, to me, especially early season here, I'm, I'll be totally honest with you, I'm very surprised to see these bucks in that field looking that yellow. Um, so that tells me that they've been on this field and it's been a major food source for them early, early on. And it's just, must have just started turning over the next last few days, but there's still just enough green for them to get some food value out and they're still patterned into actually hitting it. And if you can find a scenario like this where they're hitting these beans hard especially scouting season the week before two weeks before to catch them when the the field turns like this is a big opportunity and i'd be all over this from a hunting perspective you know what i mean because i know that you know it's going to change like dan said they're going to go in and they're going to start hitting the acorns and they're just going to change that might mean they might change locations completely because we don't know where the white acorns are here you know what I mean? Absolutely, yes. Or, or maybe, like you say, there might be a little bit of greener bean that came in late somewhere else or something like that. So that's the way I'm reading this. I do see this as a, uh, as a good hunting strategy on the beans because beans are great early. Now, later on, if there's any standing beans at all in Minnesota in the winter, and the only reason there would be is if the farmer couldn't get them out. But if there's any standing beans at all, late season, late winter, after that rut, they start herding up and they pile into these bean fields and you'll see a 40 to 100 deer. No joke. That's how important and how, you know, resourceful beans can be. And that's why I like them so much because they gotta have that protein to stay alive, to build that muscle mass back up and your alfalfas and stuff like that are covered up, you know. That's a foot of snow, two feet of snow, you know, so it's not even accessible. They're not gonna sit there and dig in two feet of snow to try to get the alfalfa and, and, uh, and, and grasses, and they're not gonna be green anymore anyway. So that's why beans are such a big deal. And, you know, on top of hilltops, they'll blow off the top, you know, so they can pick at them, even if they've been, if they've been picked, they can scratch for them. Um, but yeah, that's my take on beans is, Early season, great, uh, late season, life or death. And that's another thing that you just hit on that I've actually used as a tactic in the late season is through these cut cornfields and cut soybean fields when you're not getting a lot of good activity and you know you want to do a little bit of scouting. Snow on the ground is awesome because you can see where they've been digging around and you can look out across the field and you can see where deer have been grazing through and it gives you an idea. Another thing that I took from this too that I noticed and sometimes we take it for granted, we, we just naturally think of it, but if you notice these deer are walking up a draw. So if I come across this and I'm scouting this in the summertime or late fall and I see them in the middle of this draw where it's, it's that comes down like that, well, that's a natural corridor for them deer because they feel hidden in there. Well, if I want to set a trail camera up to try to get some activity on them deer, the best thing for me to do is follow that draw into the woods because more than likely they came out of the woods in that draw and followed that draw all the way out. And I, you know, I think that becomes a good starting point sometimes to get trail camera set up on, on a bean field like that. Feed yeah, the transition. I was, was going to get your guys' opinion. So in this scenario, I didn't really have much for stand placements around there. Um, I think it was like a maybe an eight acre field. I chose to just go in knowing that there was a bachelor group. I set up on the ground with the wind in my favor and just kind of went for broke. Would you guys go in there, hang and hunt, 
try to pop a stand in there for a few days, try to get that done? Or what would your tactic be? I absolutely would do that. If I, I mean, what are we doing now? You know, now we're scouting deer. Where are we going? We're going to the bean fields and we're hoping that we can catch them on them bean fields. Just exactly this exact scenario. We're hoping for that. So if I see something like that and like Dan pointed out and there's a transition area that they're going to, you know what I mean? They're using a low spot. They're coming out here. We know that. So we documented it with the wind. Maybe you add Red Moon into that. I'm absolutely jumping in, hanging it, and trying to get a kill. The day of. The day of, it, day before, whatever. Or I would look at the rain, the weather. You know, if I know I'm going to get a rain, um, I'd go in there and set that bugger up and make sure it got rained on right away. You know what I mean? And then it's ready, ready to go, and you didn't burn nothing or blow anything up. So that's what I would do. And I feel like this is kind of the same scenario, kind of like my 2019 hunt, to where you got a short window. You know, we talked about as soon as he took the corn down, that, that, that property I was hunting wasn't going to be great. Well, as soon as these deer decide to get out of this property, well, that may be the three days you have that trail camera sitting there trying to figure out. Whereas I feel like if you went in a hanging hunt on this, me personally, if I seen these deer out in this field and I never really caught them coming out of the spot I wanted to, but they're always in that draw, I'm more than likely going to try to find the best access to sneak in there and I'm going to go towards that draw. And I could almost bet somewhere in that draw, there's going to be a trail where they've come through. And that's going to kind of let me know, I think, that, you know, a good place to hang and hunt. I'm going to add one more point to that. The reason I would go hunt this and hit it like, like spontaneously is because in, when you're in a situation where you're like, you're in a stand on the edge of the field or else you're right on the field in a blind or something. I'm not sure. It looks almost like you're ground level. Yeah, there. I'm just sitting on the ground. Yeah. So were you, you were just hunting and kind of, instead of setting the stand, you just went in there and thought, hey, maybe I'll get a shot at these transitioning through. Well, you can't really call at these deer. It's wide open and you can't call at them, especially like JJ being on the ground. You know, they're gonna see the movement, they're gonna detect something's up, they're gonna, I mean, it's just so hard to call a deer early season like this. They're still in their bachelor groups. They just don't react to a lot. You can use, you can call to them from a curiosity perspective, but I mean, you can't be a luring doe like they wanna go, you know, cause they're just, right now they're separated from the doe. So it's really tough to call these deer in. The only thing you could even think about doing might be a little tickle. Um, but once again, then they're going to wide open. They're going to, where are you? You know, how come I can't see you, but I heard you. So it's really tough. Now, if they were off the field and you had a wall around it and you tickled, they would go into that field wondering, hey, what's who's in there? But this scenario, it's, just, it's not a calling situation. Yeah, I could see maybe a decoy working, but that's still tough. But but even still, do you think they yeah, would be curious in that? Early. It's just it really it's a little early. Deep. But yeah, it's a, such a short window. Um, if anybody, if you're out there, you got a green food source or beans that are just starting to turn and you still have an opportunity to get after them. The uh, season hasn't opened up. Hopefully we got some tips here that can help you target a big buck and get something down. So that's a Deer Society Live wrap.